So everyone, um, my name is Thomas O'Shaughnessy and this is my colleague Jess Bealey. And in the audience there is our colleague William Nolan. And today we're going to talk to you about Universal Design for Learning at the University of Limerick. We kind of refer to it as um, UDL at UL. So University of Limerick is situated on the banks of the River Shannon in the Midwest of Ireland, close to Limerick City. We have 17,500 students, uh, all of whom have really diverse needs. And we have four faculties with a huge range of courses, some face-to-face, -face, some online, and some blended. Um, so to give you some context um, about where we're at, uh, we're very much at the beginning of our journey in UDL um, at UL. So to highlight some of the work that we've done so far in the last year, we just wanted to um, show where we're at before where we started. So we had pockets of people who were interested in and promoting UDL and some had completed the UDL badge, but no institution-wide approach. Uh, we didn't have any central resources or training in UDL and we knew that for this to work, we really needed support from senior management to help us make an institutional-wide collaborative change to embed more inclusive practices. Most importantly, our project was funded for one year and we all know that we can't embed UDL in a year. Um, so I guess one of the things that we knew that we had to do was we had to look at a way to introduce UDL onto campus. And one of the things that came up for us was this HEA underspend money, which we could use in different capacities. And one of the ones that we put forward as a project was this one around UDL at UL. And we looked at another thing, which was around um, developing a kind of a UDL module. And the idea behind these was that we were trying to, I guess, embed UL, uh, uh, UDL across our campus. Um, and I guess one of the first things we needed to do there was, you know, we didn't really have a team ready to implement that. So one of the first things that we did was we kind of put a team together. So it was myself, Jess, and William. And the first thing we sat down is unlike UCC, who mentioned that, you know, going back a significant amount of time that they had before they implement, you know, they've been doing UDL. We had, I guess, what we sat down is we had a wish list. We're like, what would we like to do? First, so for us, it was really like a blank canvas. How can we start? Where can we take this? And while we did have, as Jess mentioned, pockets, and we do have really strong kind of units like our CTL or e, and our EDI units around campus, we, we just sat down and we said, what do we want and how we could build on that? Um, so I guess for us, that's kind of where we started. So what have we done in the last year? We've got four different areas that we're particularly um, interested in, um, in working on. First of all was resources and training. So we've created a dedicated website and digital repository for UDL, which also houses all of our events, which we are running. Um, for the last two years, we've teamed up with others in UL to facilitate the UDL digital badge. Um, so from this, our UDL community of practice has formed. Um, this year, we're holding a variety of drop-ins and events for our badge participants. And to date, 85 members of staff in UL have completed the digital badge. Uh, 20 of those have completed the facilitator badge. And there's currently 60 UL people who are registered on the 2022 badge course. Um, we've also offered training and workshops in UDL and accessibility uh, for academic and support staff in UL. And we've been really busy developing a UDL module, which is a level nine module, to be taught on the grad dip and masters in teaching, learning, and scholarship. And we're also going to offer this to students on our masters in technical communication and e-learning. Uh, this module will commence in spring 2024, and we're currently in the process of developing the module content. We're also planning on creating this as a standalone micro-credential. Uh, this module will look beyond introducing UDL and introduce inclusive practice and topics transcending UDL, such as anti-ableism and anti-racism, and we'll be drawing on expertise from across campus um, and nationally in these areas and collaborate with them on the module. You know, um, Jess mentioned about, you know, the UDL badge and the way that helped create U UDL kind of awareness around our campus, but I guess one of the things that we learned over, well, I learned in my own experience as well, is, you know, sometimes having that external voice come in and give their kind of point of view of where the direction should go with this. And because we were working off a blank campus, we were trying to think of who could we bring in that would really emphasize kind of what we want to see come through the University of Limerick. So. We, we decided to go with uh, Dr. Thomas Tobin, and I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with uh, Dr. Tobin. And I guess what we wanted is one of the things that we always talked about when we talk about UDL is, you know, the top down, bottom up, and middle out. It's that really combination of the three rather than any individual one. And so for us, we were trying to think how could we maybe tie that in with what Thomas Tobin was, uh, could discuss within it. So we went with kind of three webinars, as, and they were kind of, to be honest, they were designed for in-house. And the first one was really about just 
not really, it wasn't an introduction to UDL, I wouldn't say, it went beyond that, and it was just about really setting the scene for what would come after that. And then the second one was really something that was, I guess, important to us, but important to a lot of the staff on campus as well, was about highlighting the important part that, and it, sometimes it gets forgotten, is that support staff play in facilitating and supporting UDL and UDL change. So the second, the second webinar was really a lot about that. The third one then focused about senior management, so we had our president, our vice president there, and that was really, I guess, to get that support, as, as UCC mentioned there, from upper, uh, senior management and how important that is in driving the UDL agenda. We also, Jess and I, we did UDL, um, UDL talks and presentations and, and kind of lectures for the, our international office, which is UL Global. We did it for undergraduate and postgraduate courses. And we also developed, as Jess mentioned, a range of resources, and they included like showcases of really good examples of UDL practices that were happen happening on campus, because we know as well, like you know, that peer interaction. We know how much peers value each other's opinions about you know, what works and what doesn't work, and for us, we felt that was a really important part of how we were gonna build on our, our, kind of our UDL stance. And for us, like, that's something that we're even building on further at the moment in terms of video content and stuff like that as well. The other thing that we did, and Again, I think it's benefits when you're coming from that kind of blank canvas approach is that, you know, we had that stakeholder involvement, and I know that came up a lot in the different presentations that were here today. And for us, that was one of the most important things that we did, that interaction with our different members from, you know, our Center for Transformative Learning, our EDI, ITD, senior management. We just found a rich of information about, you know, where they envisioned UDL, where they envisioned, envisioned inclusive practice going forward. So for us, that gave us a real kind of rich information about you know, how we could actually start disseminating more awareness around UDL as well. And for us, one of the things, and um, I guess I, I, I come a little bit with my accessibility hat on wherever I go, James. Uh, and, uh, so for me, like accessibility was one of the things that we really wanted to drive when we were, were trying to you know, embed UDL. And for, for me, just like UDL, accessibility, if you embed it at the start, that makes it, you know, that makes it just part of you know, that culture that Dara mentioned earlier. And for us, you know, I, I was reading Mindy Johnson uh, earlier, and she was saying that you know you can have accessibility without UDL, but you can't have UDL without accessibility. And I think that's something that's always resonated with me. That you know we talk about what's universal about something that's not accessible, and sometimes we see a lot of stuff around, you know, uh, UDL where you know it's not accessible, students can't engage with. And for me, that was one of the things that I really wanted to address from the start. The other thing we talked about is you know, James mentioned Blackboard Alley, so we we just brought in a new. Um, Philly called Brightspace, and for us, the criteria behind bringing in Brightspace, like accessibility, our Center for Teacher and Learning put accessibility front and center as one of the key components when we were deciding on which VLE we were going to adopt. And in, in, in like other institutions as well, we decided to get in Blackboard Alley, which we'll be kind of launching in um, January of next year. And so for us, you know, it was about having that in kind of already embedded for the students and we also, you know, for us, and I think, I'm not sure who mentioned it, I think it was James that mentioned it as well about that, for us, accessible culture. So for us, where we talk about accessibility, it goes far beyond just that digital content, the PDFs you upload, the PowerPoints you put on, slide, uh, PowerPoint slides you put up. We were trying to change it much bigger than that, so we started looking, working with our Markham's team to develop our accessibility statement and accessible resource hub that goes with that. We started working with our, our HR department to deliver accessible communication training. We started working with our IT department in terms of procurement. So not only are we not, um, allow, not promoting kind of inaccessible products, but we're actually trying to block them at source. So if someone is trying to put through a product now in terms of teaching and learning or whatever, they have to go through this procurement process and it flags them in terms of accessibility. So they have to provide a VPAID statement and say the kind of what's happening there. We've provided accessibility training. And you know, for us, we've done so much in terms of trying to, even in terms of infrastructure as well, in terms of just trying to promote more accessibility there. The other thing that we did as well is we're trying to kind of mainstream assistive technology as well. So we're working with different people on, on campus like the library and stuff like that to start mainstreaming these supports because we saw from things like the index survey how important uh, or how not important, how common now the use of assistive, assistive technology is and it's much beyond just students with disabilities as well. So I guess... So communities of practice and cross-campus collaboration are very much at the epicenter of what our project is about. Um, we've been building our community of practice and we formed a UDL special interest group with members from across campus. Um, our UDL community of practice is open to everyone on campus 
and currently comprises 130 members, including academic and support staff and students. We celebrated the launch of our community of practice in November 2021, it's very new. Um, this event was funded by the National Forum for Teaching and Learning Vital Fund and Dr. Sean Bracken spoke about developing UDL professional learning communities to enhance cross-campus inclusion. The aim of our community of practice is to support staff in the integration of UDL in their practice by providing a space for everyone to come together to share practices and ideas and most importantly ask questions. Uh, our meetings are structured but informal and they're not recorded to be a safe space for free discussion and we write up notes afterwards and circulate them to the campus community. Uh, from this semester we're also holding UDL cafes where we provide resources on particular topics in multiple means, very UDL, so that includes readings and videos and podcasts and we provide guiding questions for our community to consider when they engage with the topics and then we meet to discuss the topic and we're also going to be creating a space on our new VLE now that it's nearly in place uh, where we can include discussion forums for those who can't attend our meetings. The other thing that we set up and we felt it was really important, like the, we knew the importance of the, C, the, the community of practice in terms of peers, but in terms of infect, uh, impact in policy and practice, we thought we needed something more. So that's where the kind of UDL special interest, interest group came from. And so it kind of it came in under the umbrella of EDI and under the Human Rights, uh, Rights Committee and under that kind of inclusion pillar that comes there. And the idea behind the UDL SIG, it would have staff, it has staff from different faculty on campus, different support services, from different areas around campus. And it's all about kind of trying to remove barriers that exist on campus. So this group meets, you know, uh, once every two months. And the idea behind the group is that we just pick one topic. So last time we picked, for example, communication, and everybody from the group talked about any kind of potential barriers and diff uh, difficulties that students and staff are experiencing engaging with these different barriers, or these different technologies or different supports. And so, you know, we always had our own perspective about these different barriers, and you talk to different faculty, but the amount of kind of rich information that kind of came from having these discussions and the different voices being present at this, and we had the undergrads, undergraduate students represented, we had postgrad students represented. So for us, we had this real kind of voice in the room that would allow us to see what the barriers were. And this whole, whole point behind the SIG is that it can actually report back to the, our executive committee where decisions can actually be made on how that you know, alter policy and that alter practice going forward. So that was kind of our motivation to do the UDL SIG, was about impacting policy and practice. So we also really value the opportunity to share a network with external stakeholders, and it's lovely to see so many of you today in person. Um, we'll be presenting at the UDL HE conference, Dig Digicon conference this week. Um, and we're really looking forward to contributing our experiences so far and we're really looking for feedback from others on what we've been doing and what our plans are. We're also working in a number of, with, oh, sorry, excuse me, with a number of national partners on accessibility projects and a new universal design for, uh, badge for student support and engagement. So I guess where we're going with this, we talked about for a long time about this kind of, when we talked about that wish list, it was kind of like for this center for inclusive practice that would kind of collaborate uh, with different uh, stakeholders on campus. Um, so that's kind of where we see this going in terms of the future. We also want to do, you know, uh, more around student engagement. But for us, one of the important things that we had there is we wanted to start embedding UDL. We wanted to start embedding accessibility. So when we brought in our student intern, we could start working with the different students on campus, start creating a kind of a student campaign really about around inclusive practice, around UDL and around accessibility. And um, so we're going to be hiring that student intern hopefully starting in January. Um, and we're going to be doing kind of student, again, student campaign with presence, uh, with videos showing kind of what's happening on campus, what UDL is about. And so that we, we again, feeding into that awareness thing that we started at the start. Um, and feeding into the awareness as well, as well as developing our UDL micro-credential, we're going to be piloting a UDL academy next year where module leaders will get intensive help and support uh, with redesigning their modules with UDL principles and accessibility principles. And we're also planning to create more incentives for staff to encourage them to take on UDL practices. The other thing that we thought was really important and it's something that we've been quite passionate about was in terms of, you know, UDL research. Someone mentioned earlier about, the, you know, that need to measure more about uh, implementation and integration and the impact that has on both staff and students. We've already started work there. We've put stuff through in terms of research, but that's kind of, and we're hoping to hire a kind of postdoc researcher to pass for funding, which will should roll out maybe in around January, February time. 
Um, so the idea is that, you know, we're, as well, the other thing that we really wanted from that was this kind of collaborative front where we'd work with other institutions. And um, so I guess for us, that's kind of, kind of where we're at. But for us, I guess we, we see this as, a, our, like Dara had mentioned earlier about this cultural shift, you know, this, that's kind of what we're trying to do. We're trying to change the whole culture around inclusive education and around UDL. And we know it's kind of slow and steady. We also, you know, we, we talked about, um, we were just look, reading a Carissa paper the other day where it talked about UDL being almost in opposition to capitalism. And we're very aware that a lot of universities, you know, really take that capitalist um, approach to education. So for us, we're looking at, I think it was UCC mentioned as well, that sustainability about going forward, how we're going to deliver on our UDL promises. Um, and I guess kind of that sums up kind of our kind of future and our view of UDL and where, we're, where we were and where we're going. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. <laughs>